Welcome to the Chicama Live Show with your host, Chicama. Uh, please like the video. Let's have 10,000 likes on this video here alone. This is groundbreaking, earth-shattering news. And when I did my research on this on YouTube, YouTube does not have it. YouTube has a Chinese guy claiming to have been the first to genetically modify babies. But that is incorrect. And in fact, that story is seven months old. The actual world's first genetically modified babies who were born were 30 babies born in the 90s all the way up to 2001. I present to you the world first genetically modified babies born. Let us begin. The world's first genetically modified humans have been created. It was revealed last night. This is dated 2001 by Michael Hanlon of the Daily Mail. The disclosure that 30 healthy babies were born after a series of experiments in the United States provoked another furious debate about ethics. So far, two of the babies, babies have been tested and have been found to contain gen genes from three parents. Fifteen of the children were born in the past three years as a result of one experimental program at the Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Science of St. Bernabas in New Jersey. The babies were born to women who had problems conceiving. Extra genes from a female donor were inserted into their eggs before they were fertilized in an attempt to enable them to conceive. Genetic fingerprints test on two one-year-old children confirm that they have inherited DNA from three adults, two women, one man. The fact that the children have inherited the extra genes and incorporated them into their germline means that they will, in turn, be able to pass them on to their offspring. Altering the human germline, in effect, tinkering with the very makeup of our species, is a technique shunned by the vast, vast majority of the world's scientists. Geneticists fear that one day this method could be used to create new races of humans with extra desired characteristics, such as strength or high intelligence. Writing in the journal Human Reproduction, the researchers, led by fertility pioneer Professor Jacques Cohen, say that this is the first case of human germline genetics modification resulting in normal, healthy children. So, I did a little bit of research. Me, Shigama. Who is Professor Jacques Cohen? From LifeNews.com, I found this research on him. And I'm quoting from LifeNews.com. I went to the Journal of Human Reproduction, looking for the latest issues, and found nothing from Jacques Cohen. I then found that Dr. Cohen is the laboratory director at Art Institute of Washington at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Apparently, he left Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Scientist of St. Barnabas and works for a U.S. military hospital, a fact that I find very disturbing. Watch the video again to look at all the facts of this video. I scratched my head for a minute and dug deeper and think I have found the original paper. It was from 2001, not 2012. The technique is called cytoplasmic transfer. I did not start blogging until 2005, so I had no idea that this genetic engineering of embryos took place. I then found an in-depth report in the Washington Monthly on the issue. 
Sharon Brownlee explains how the technique raised concerns at the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and it seems they put a stop to cytoplasmic transfer in the United States. In the mid-1990s, embryologist Jack Cohen pioneered a promising new technique for helping infertile women have children. His technique, known as cytoplasmic transfer, was intended to, quote, unquote, rescue the eggs of infernal women who had undergone repeated unsuccessful attempt at in vitro fertilization or IVF. It involved injecting the cytoplasmic found inside of the egg of a fertile donor into the patient's eggs. When the first baby conceived through cytoplasmic transfer was born in 1997, the press instantly hailed Cohen technique as yet another technological miracle. But, four years later, the real story has proven somewhat more complicated. Last year, Cohen and his colleague at the Institute for Reproductive Medicine and Science at St. Bernabas, a New Jersey fertility clinic, set off alarm bells among bioethicists with the publication of a paper detailing the genetic condition of two the 17 cytoplasmic transfer babies born through the clinic to date. The embryologists reported that they had endowed the children with extra bits of a special type of genetic material known as mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA which came with the cytoplasmic transferred from the donor egg to the patients. Just how normal those children will turn out to be is anybody's guess. At a recent meeting in Europe, the New Jersey researchers reported that one of the children's conceived through cytoplasmic transfer had been diagnosed with, quote, pervasive development disorder, a catch-all term for Symptoms that range from mild delays in speech to autism. Cohen's group maintained that this is extremely unlikely that cytoplasmic transfer and the resulting mishmash of mtDNA is to blame. And that's true. There is a pervasive, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going off track here. There is a preponderance of autism in children born these days and in the 1990s versus in the 50s and 40s and the 30s and 20s. So saying that uh, that the cytoplasmic transfer is to blame is not factual at all. But geneticists have only began to trace the connection between mtDNA and a host of diseases ranging from strange metabolic ailments to diabetes and Lou Gehrig's disease, and some experts argue that the children's disorder may well be caused by a mismatch between the donor and the mother's mtDNA. As Jen Cummings, a molecular biologist at Murdoch University in Western Australia put it, quote, to deliberately create individuals with multiple mitochondrial genotypes without knowing the consequences is really a step into the dark. Thank you, Jim, for that silly comment. Since 1998, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, has argued that genetically manipulated embryos are a biological product and therefore subject to regulation just like medical devices and drugs. But, because of a quirk in federal law, the FDA's authority in this sphere is far from certain. Last summer, FDA sent warning letters to six fertility centers threatening, quote, enforcement action, and asserting its regulatory power over, quote, therapy involving the transfer of gemet genetic materials by means other than the union of sperm and egg. Cohen's clinic at St. Bernabas chose to stop performing cytoplasmic transfer, but at least two other recipients scoffed at the agency's threat. Panos Zavos, an embryologist at a Kentucky fertility clinic, and Brigitte 
Boisselier, the scientific director of Clinoid, the clinic set up by a group known as the Reliants, who believes human beings were genetically engineered by aliens, both have announced their intentions to clone a human being. Both also disputed the FDA's authority, and several bioethicists and legal scholars had to agree that the FDA could not prevent them from tinkering with human bioengineering. Quote, it's a stretch for the FDA, says R. Alto Claro, a legal scholar and bioethicist at the University of Wisconsin and former member of President Bill Clinton's Bioethics Advisory Committee. So the children born using cytoplasm transfer are indeed genetically modified. Some experts severely criticize the experiments. Lord Winston of the Hammersmith Hospital in Western London told the BBC yesterday, this is continuing on with the 2001 uh, article, quote, regarding the treatment of the infertile, there is no evidence that this technique is worth doing. I am very surprised that it was even carried out at this stage. It would certainly not be allowed in Britain. John Smeaton, National Director of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, said, quote, One has tremendous sympathy for couples who suffer infertility problems, but this seems to be a further illustration of the fact that the whole process of in vitro fertilization as a means of conceiving babies leads to babies being regarded as objects in a production line. It is further and very worrying step down from the wrong road of humanity. Now I just want to pause here just to give my opinion about this. So the fact is uh, there are people who are opposed to even in vitro fertilization. They believe that that is meddling in the avenues of the quote-unquote almighty and that we should not be doing it. But that also means that many, many children would not be born. And as things go, it is not uh, as intrusive as, say, uh, a GMO created baby. But there you have it. People are opposed to it. Professor Cohen and his colleagues diagnosed that the women were infertile because they had defects in tiny structures in their egg cells called mitochondria. Because mitochondria contain genes, the babies resulting from the treatment have inherited DNA from both women. These genes can now be passed down the germline along the maternal line. A spokesman for the Human Fertilization and Embryology Authority, HFEA, which regulates assisted reproduction technology in Britain, said that it would not license the technique here because it involved altering the germline. Jack Cohen is regarded as a brilliant but controversial scientist who has pushed the boundaries of assisted reproduction technologies. He developed a technique which allows infertile men to have their own children by injecting sperm DNA straight into the egg in the lab. Prior to this, only infertile women were able to conceive using IVF. Last year, Professor Cohen said that his expertise would allow him to clone children, a prospect treated with horror by the mainstream scientific community. I want to keep pointing out that this is from 2001, that the article is from 2001, the actual papers are from 1996. Quote, it would be an afternoon work for one of my students, he said, adding that he had been approached by at least three individuals wishing to create a cloned child, but had turned down their requests. Now, I want you to point out then that the, the on YouTube, they are trying to hail the Chinese doctor uh, as being the world's first 
a produ producer of genetically modified babies being born. This is a lie. There is no other way to say that. And although a lot of people uh, will, will say you can't say that, that's all it is. It's a complete lie, as put forth by CNN, uh, as put forth by Mayo Clinic, as put forth by DN DW News, Vice News, SciShow, Good Morning America, Aging Reverse, Tech2 Gaming, N2DT TV, CGN TN America, Bloomberg Markets and Finance, uh, Scientific Insider, CBS This Morning, AP, that's the Associated Press, ABC News, USA Today, uh, uh, France uh, 24 English News Channel, Wall Street Journal, News 18 Digital, South China Morning Post, uh, Bloomberg Technology, CGT in America, Cleveland Clinic, uh, uh, CBS News, uh, AP Archive, Rappler, Today, the Today Show, South China Morning Post several times, Global News, Airing News, uh, VOA News, Global News, Time Magazine, uh, Washington Post, CBS Miami, CBS News, National Academy of Science, Engineering, and Medicine are all lying. The Chinese guy is not the first guy to produce a genetically modified child. It happened in 1996. His story happened in uh, 2018. So, <laughs> claiming that China is ahead of the United States in this particular thing, which I am surprised at. To my knowledge, Germany was the one that had been delving into the actual uh, genetically modifying, as far as humans go, and, and doing the uh, sequencing the human genome. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Uh, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, the channel is doing fantastic. Thank you all for all the views. Uh, I do have merch. You can go to merch. I'll put that uh, link in the description. If you want to donate, donate at paypal.me slash shikama or cashapp.me slash dollar sign shikama. Thank you so much. And also, why don't you go ahead and if you like a comment that somebody else made, uh, thumbs up their comment too. Like I said, I'd like to see 10,000 likes on this video. Thank you.